All right, so in the plan for this week, it says week of 222 to 225, uh, I've got a link here that says introduction to topographic maps and bathymetric charts. And I want to show you a few things about that. And then um, there's a video I want you to watch for the remainder of the period it says, how close are we to completely mapping the ocean? It's about eight minutes and it's really good. It shows different kinds of uh, depth measurement techniques and talks about the reality about that most of the ocean is not uh, clearly mapped. We haven't depth sounded most of the ocean even though we've uh, pretty clearly mapped the surface of even other planets and the moon. The real challenge is that the ocean is opaque, so you can't see to the bottom. You have to uh, use depth sounding techniques. So anyway, this introduction to topographic maps and bathymetric charts in the, um, in the folder, let's see, one more person. So it's 10, 30. In the folder for this unit, uh, there's a link that says topographic maps and bathymetric charts. So let me just bring that up this way to you. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to illustrate the surface of the earth. And one of them is a type of map called a a topographic map. So if you took um, geology, you may have seen a map that looks like this. And topographic maps are used to uh, illustrate how land goes. And this turns out to be the topographic map for uh, South Williamsport. And here's Williamsport. There's a city. There's like kind of kind of Newberry. And this right here, here that's the. Um, hold on a second. I got some sound coming through. This is the high school right here. So now I've zoomed in, and this is the high school. And it's actually a continuous building. But uh, you can see the position of the high school, and there's the position of the track. But all throughout this map, there's a whole bunch of different things that are color-coded. White areas are kind of open areas. Green areas are areas that are forested or wooded. Uh, areas that are pink are highly populated. So this is like where there's a lot of houses. But other places, these little black dots, those are individual houses, like up on Fox Hollow Road and whatnot. And uh, big buildings like the high school are shown. Uh, this says Theodore Roosevelt Junior High School because it turns out Wham's uh, was a middle school called Roosevelt Middle School, but before that it was Roosevelt Junior High. Um, sometimes these don't get updated too often. But the thing that's important on this map that makes it a topographic map are these brown lines that run all over the map. And those brown lines show areas of equal elevation or equal height above sea level. And this line here that says 800, it turns out that if you were to walk on, if you were to follow this map and walk along this brown line, you would be 800 feet above sea level and you would not go up or down, but you would just continuously follow the hillside at a constant elevation. And then there's a line for 700, that's 700 feet above sea level. And then, uh, well, down here by the river, the river is like about 500, 510 feet above sea level. In the map on the left, it's more dramatic, where there's lots of these brown lines really close to each other. This is Bald Eagle Mountain, which you can see from the city on the far side, the south side, uh, with a nice ridge that runs along like that. So on land, topographic maps are used to help people navigate, but also it helps you see uh, landforms. We do the same thing under the ocean, but we don't call them topographic maps. This is a map that shows both a combination of uh, landforms and ocean depth. So here in the United States, the eastern part of the United States uh, is fairly low elevation and it's shown in green, but you can see the Appalachian Mountains, which Williamsport is part of. But in the west, you can see the Rocky Mountains very clearly, much higher elevation. Down here in South America, you can see the Andes Mountains over in Asia, uh, where India we studied India runs into Asia. You can see the Himalaya mountains. So elevations are pretty easy to see. The same thing is for the ocean. In places in the ocean that are very shallow, it's shown on this map as being white. And then places that are very deep is like a nice dark blue. And between North America and Europe, you can clearly see this mid-Atlantic ridge, which runs halfway between North America and Europe. 
and that mid-Atlantic ridge is shown as a place of uh, smaller depth. So we, you also know that the Arctic Ocean has the, uh, on average, is the shallowest. And up here, the Arctic Ocean, it's like nice and white. Uh, let's see, 235. So basically, this combines both showing elevations above sea level and depths in the ocean. Green is low elevation, brown is high elevation, and for water, dark blue is really deep and white is shallow. So that's a combination with land and water. What we're interested in this course is just about water depth itself. So, oh, my green screen's kind of all weird looking. That's kind of weird. Anyway, this is a, a map showing the Hawaiian island chain. This is the big island of Hawaii, the island of Maui, Molokai, Oahu, and Kauai. And uh, on this map, you can see relative depths. So anything that is brown is land that's above the sea. Anything that's white or blue is in the ocean itself. And there's a depth chart here on the left. It shows very shallow water up to 100 meters or about 300 feet is white. And then you go through these gradations of darker and darker blues down to 6,000 feet or 6,000 meters, which is about 18,000 feet. And that's here in like the Hawaiian trough, uh, which surrounds the island of Hawaii in fairly deep water. You can also see these little sea mounts uh, rising up from the ocean floor. And around on the map, I know it's going to be hard to see in the zoom, but if you download the thing, you can see the numbers. There's actually numbers all over this map, which are depth sounding uh, values. So like there's one right here, and there's one over there, and there's one over there. So if you go around with a boat and you do depth sounding um, using the sonar technique of sending sound down to the bottom of the ocean and come back up, measure the time, you can tell the depth of different places. There's a place off Molokai here called the Penguin Bank that's relatively shallow. And then, uh, you know, at some place it gets a little deeper and then it gets even deeper yet. So that's another way to illustrate depth. This is another chart. It's a bathymetric chart for a lake. So we call these bathymetric charts. So just the same as bath refers to depth of water, like a bath or the study of bathymetry, uh, bathymetric surveys or bathymetric charts show relative depths. So this is a lake. Uh, on this illustration. Anything that's white is land. Anything here that's colored is um, the water itself. And there's two things to see about this map. First off, really shallow water is kind of like red. And then the deeper water goes down toward the blues. And the deepest places in this lake are right up here and right over there. So it's not necessarily true that the deepest place in the lake is in the middle of the lake. You'd say the middle of the lake might be here, but this looks like uh, 15 meters. But then over here, it's 18 meters. So there's a place that's actually the deepest that's relatively close to shore. The two things that this map illustrates are depth with a false color image. So the shallow is kind of red around the shore. And the deepest places are the blues. But the other thing that you see on this map are these black lines. And the black lines are areas of equal depth. So just the same as in a topographic map, the brown lines show areas of equal elevation above sea level. Uh, this map shows areas of equal depth. So for instance, where it says 14, this is a depth of 14 meters. Everywhere along this black line is an area of depth of the water that is exactly 14 meters in depth. Anything to this side of the line is less than 14 meters in depth. And anything to the other side of the line where it's darker blue is greater than 14 meters. The other thing that's important is how close the lines are to each other. So for instance, if you were to get in this lake on the shore and travel from here all the way to here, you go from a depth of zero and you cross uh, 16 of these lines as you go from there all the way to here. So it turns out that to get from the shore to a depth of 16 meters, you have to travel this big distance across the lake. Where on the other hand, if you were to start out on the shore here and travel toward the southwest, you'd get to 16 meters in a pretty small distance. Well, one thing you can notice on the map is if you get from this shore to 16 meters by traveling along this line, the lines, the black lines themselves are relatively spaced out. They're pretty far apart. Where on the other hand, if you go from the shore here to this place where it's 16 meters, you cross a whole bunch of these lines pretty quickly. And in some places, they're packed in really tight. 
So this kind of like gray or black smear represents a place where the ocean, where the uh, lake drops off really quickly. So this is for a lake, but it could be the same thing uh, for an ocean. Here's the island of Antigua or, and uh, Antigua and Barbados, which is an island down island nation down in the Caribbean. And so you're actually looking at a place that's right here where it says like Darkwood Beach. Let's see, go ahead. Oh yeah, uh, right around in here is this place because this Cades Reef is actually this little thing that's right here. So on this map, you can see these numbers that are written like 11, 12, 24, 19. And there's places where it says three or four. Those all indicate relative depths. So on uh, charts, so on land, we call them maps, but in the ocean, we call them charts. So if I say chart, we're talking about a map that's in the ocean. Uh, all these numbers represent relative, relative depths. And those are important to help uh, a ship navigate. So for instance, if you are in a boat or a ship whose hull extends down five meters, which is like uh, about 15 feet, you can't travel anywhere here where it's like this kind of medium blue color because these numbers in here say three and four. Your boat would run aground. Same thing here around this reef. But in this channel, it's relatively deep. 11, 12, 13, 14 meters. So uh, these maps can help illustrate relative amounts of depth in different kinds of places. Here's a more detailed one. We're going to look at some detailed uh, charts in class. We can't do it today because we're kind of remote, but you're going to look at some charts that show uh, those kind of combinations of lines that run parallel to the shore uh, of areas of equal depth, and they're marked with numbers, and they're also marked with colors. So here, this is off the coast of New Hampshire. Uh, Hampshire New Hampshire's here, and Massachusetts is here, so this is the Atlantic Ocean, and there's places in the ocean that are fairly deep, like in here, down here, and off this side. But then there's also this area that's relatively shallow that runs out um, extending from Cape Ann off the east coast of Massachusetts. And uh, that's useful maybe for fishermen. Maybe they're lobster fishing or you know going lobstering or fishing. And you're looking for water of a particular depth where uh, fish might more commonly hang out or something like that. Or maybe that's a breeding ground. All right. so. Um, we would do this today, but you kind of got to do it on paper. It's difficult to do remote. So what we're going to do on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday is look at areas where uh, you have depth sounding data, and we're going to build those kind of bathymetric charts. So for instance, the first example we'll use is uh, this chart off the coast of Clearwater, Florida. So this is the Gulf Coast of Florida or the West Coast of Florida. And this kind of like brownish, yellowish area up here, this is actually land. And then this is extending out into the Gulf of Mexico. And the numbers that are on this uh, map are areas of, are, are depths, depth sounds. And uh, they happen to be in, in depths in meters. And here it says one, this is like about one meter in depth. And then out here it's like, you know, nine meters, seven meters, eight meters. And you go way out here and it gets to 47 meters of depth, which is about 150 feet of depth of water. And uh, this could be a bathymetric survey that is made by taking a boat and heading out toward the west, getting to some kind of place, maybe turn around and head back toward the east, and in a systematic way, measure the depth for this uh, whole area off the coast of Clearwater, Florida. But I'll also show you a tool that we're gonna use in uh, Google Earth which lets you get this data for any place in the ocean. In some places, it's very precise. Other places, it's not precise. So anyway, uh, we'll use maps or data that looks like this to build bathymetric charts with these lines that show areas of equal depth. And those are called isobaths. So if you took geology, you may have done uh, uh, contour lines on a topographic map, but it's also very similar if you took meteorology. Um, you may have done isotherms, which are lines of equal temperature on a weather map, or uh, isobars, which are lines of 
equal pressure for um, also for a weather map. Basically, we'll transform a map like that into this, where these lines represent lines of equal depth. And those lines of equal depth make it easy to quickly reference how the depth works for uh, different places in the ocean. So I'll show you how that works on Monday, and you'll practice some on Monday and on Tuesday. And then uh, later on in the week, next week, there's a lab about uh, reading charts. So I have a whole bunch of nautical charts that are in very high resolution uh, for different places around the earth, especially around the United States. We'll use those to interpret uh, places where you could take a ship or not take a ship, depending upon the draft of the ship or how much ship is below the water or, um, you know, just to understand where undersea cables run, how to interpret where sea mounts and uh, ocean trenches exist. All right, so that's what we're gonna do on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Let me get out of there. So what I want you to do for the remainder of the period is in the uh, folder for this unit, we'll just go back so you see how to get to it. You should know how to get to it anyway. Our current unit is chapter three. If you click on the chapter three folder, then there's the plan for the week, week of 222 to 225. And uh, there's a video here that says, uh, how close are we to completely mapping the ocean? And I'm not gonna show it to you through the zoom because the sound isn't good, the video is all choppy and whatnot. So I want you to watch this uh, separately as soon as we're done here. And uh, it asks the question about how close are we to mapping the whole ocean? What's the purpose of mapping the whole ocean? And how do we use that mapping data to uh, you know, learn about things in all the fields of oceanography, biological oceanography, chemical oceanography, geologic oceanography, and uh, uh, physical oceanography. I think I said all four of them. So watch that video, and then on Monday we'll, you know, when we get back together, this is the video here, whenever we get back together, we'll do a bunch of practice with bathymetric charts. All right, if you have any questions, or you need anything, or you have, want to talk about anything, you can put it in the chat, or my sound is on. But otherwise, uh, for the remainder of the period, uh, watch that video, it's about eight minutes, and uh, maybe look through the topographic maps and bathymetric charts presentation.